Hi folks, well today is St. Patty's Day, so I wore a green shirt, of course. And I uh, just wanted to let you know that today, I mentioned this the last time, and I watched the video after we made it. This video in particular, just like the other one, it's all on me. It's not about the horse. It's been, it was about the horse when I went outside. Now it's about me and how well I can present myself. So the pressure on me is to do it well and do it right. And it's not pressure, I don't care. So what I've got to pay attention to is when he loses his mind, his mind goes somewhere else, have him check in now because them days are getting to be over. And the goal, and when I watched the video after I made it, it was real hard to see because I told you I was waiting for the foot to land to the inside. Well, I could feel it but I don't know that you could see it that well. Well, today what you're gonna watch is you're gonna watch the neck be bent the direction of the circle and the horse will be walking in a circle on a loose rein. That's where we're headed. So when I start, he has no idea what I just said. So as you know, we do the good, the bad, and the ugly. If I have to shut him down, you'll watch me shut him down two or three different ways. First being disengage the hindquarter until he stops, keep bumping. Second being just disengage the hindquarter and keep moving. And third, I'll bump straight up and stop him, which is setting him up for a slide. So I'm gonna work him for a little bit and then stop and let him think. But what I would like you to remember today for the future is you're gonna watch collection build. I'm not even thinking about training it into him. You're going to watch it happen because of all the times I bump him and all the times he starts to feel like he needs to move off of my body, he will collect himself. And he was born in collection. Okay, so the circle is what we're after. Now what I want to do is stop using my hand and just use my leg. Outside leg is the impulsion. If I need the inside leg, then so be it. But I want to quit being so busy with my hands. I'm breathing as well as I can. I've got my posture where it needs to be. He's not reading my skeleton. Inside leg. Outside leg. There's a change. Now when I say the word outside leg, I don't mean spur. Bump. All I need is that bend right there. Looking where I want to go, bump, inside leg. Bump, outside leg. Now just for the sake of knowing, he falls apart when we're headed towards the barn. Imagine that, falling apart, redirecting, Exhale. Now what you're watching is a horse searching. That's why it's, it's not classic. He's just searching, there. Now remember, I don't want to open my hand way out here. I want to stay as close to the neck as I can. Inside leg, bump, bump straight back. Outside leg, his speed goes up and down simply because of the where his head is pointed in the circle. Looking, and when he gets right, I'm going to change directions. Outside leg. Good. 
Impulsion. Impulsion. Impulsion means calves, not spur. Direction. Direction. Now I think you can appreciate why I don't have a fence. Changing directions, right leg turned out, straight ahead, looking straight, and turning my body, connecting with my left calf. Overreacting, looking, inside leg. Now I'm going to stay with this inside leg until he moves there. Impulsion. Looking. Inside leg. Loose rein. Remember, I keep throwing the rein back every chance I get. Outside leg, he sped up. That's towards the barn. There is no fence to stop him. Looking, raising my right shoulder, made it better that time. Now, time for a break. Straight up, one hand. I need him to check out. That's the roller coaster of riding a horse without a fence. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen, and he's going to get it right. And then when he does get it, it'll be solid. It won't be by leaning on the fence. Now, I got to talk to my friend Brent Salmon the other night. In, uh, in the ranching world, the word, if you ever see a program on an, any, any channel of TV or any documentary, the first thing you're going to hear about is tradition. Well, in fact, it is a tradition. It's a very old tradition and it's unique to the United States of America, the style of ranching we do. Okay, now I've, there's a new word being introduced and it's proactive. And it doesn't sound very cool, but it's a fact. And what it amounts to is that I think everybody has figured out that we in fact are in climate change. There's extremes in weather. And what that tells me, looking down the road 10 years, is that I believe ranchers have to adjust and start thinking now of what they can do to be able to match Mother Nature and get along with her. Okay, that means when to pull bulls, when to wean, when to turn out. All those are factors, and Brent's the kind of guy that's always thinking. That's the good news. The bad news is, is when he's trying to work his colts, he has seven other things on his mind at the very same time. Well, I'm fortunate because my mind's very small, so I can focus on what I'm doing. So, I guess the word I want you to remember is proactive. Tradition's a given. Now, I'm going to go to the left. Outside leg, good. Left turn, rein is loose, bump with the right eye, changing eyes. Outside left leg, right turn, bump, bump, and It was 100% better this time, and now it's not a secret. What I want to tell you is something that happens all the time. The time I stood there talking about my friend Brent gave this colt the time to think and process. And now we, he and I have crossed another bridge. We got about a thousand bridges to cross, but it makes me feel really good today because he in fact sorted it out while I was standing there babbling. 
Okay, tomorrow it may not work, but I, it doesn't matter to me. I already know that he knows that I know that he knows. So the jig is up. It's over. So now, real quick, I want to tell you about the Irish coming to America in the 1840s, I believe it was, and there was a lot of them. And what happened was, was that of the era, the subject I'm talking about is when the United States went to war with Mexico. Okay, these Irishmen got off the boat, say for example in Boston or New York, and there'd be a recruiter standing at the bottom of the plank and he might say, lad, if you want to have three hots in a cot, you can join the army. Well, the Irish historically have fought wars for other nations all over the world. That's what they did. So the guy, the Irishman has nothing, steps off and he thinks, well, I'll get fed. Sure, so he joins. So now he ends up down in Brownsville, Texas, and there's a lot of them. And he finds out that the officers are mainly Englishmen and the English hate the Irish. So they're very, very prejudiced against the Irishmen and they basically torture them a lot and give them a really hard time. Across the border in Mexico, the war is starting against Mexico and the Mexican people learn about the Irish and they send little notes over on written on paper. Come join us. If you will fight for us, we will give you land when the war is over. So these Irishmen are getting the hell knocked out of them on the United States side. And about a hundred and some deserted over time. And went to the Mexican side to fight for the Mexicans. Well, the one group that went, they were artillerymen. So when they got down there, the Mexican government gave them their own cannon and their own... Uh, ammunition and set them up to be cannoneers. Well, they were called the San Patricios, St. Patrick's. And the Irish really loved them because they, in fact, were all Catholics. And that's the main reason they told them, you come down here, we're all Catholics. Don't fight your brother. So these deserters joined them, fought, fought well. And then the United States ended up winning the war. And they found the Irishmen that had deserted and hung them. I think there was 70 they hung for desertion after the United States won the war. Well, there's a statue in Monterrey talking about the San Patricios. And so Mexico has always had a kinship with Ireland. And whether that's a coming in the back door or what for me, but I have always had a kinship with Mexico. But I just wanted to let you know that there was a bunch of... And the thing that gets me the most is the Irishmen that were hung by the United States weren't citizens of the United States. They never got the time to be citizens. Get it? Off the boat, in the army. They didn't go through the paperwork. So they were actually Irishmen hung by the United States. So I just wanted to share that with you. Now my horse, I'm going to do it one more time. Now, I mentioned the schooling walk last time. Well, today his movements are kind of erratic and then he's starting to level out and he made it at what they call a cracking good pace. And I'm not going to fight that. I'm going to roll with it. So when I pick up my hand now, he should check in, which is now. Leave. Turn. Now, I've got slack in the rain. Right turn. Left calf. Bump, 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 impulsion. Left turn, bump, right calf, slack rein. Right, left. Now this is why when I stop, I raise my hand straight up because if I pulled this way he would think he needed to turn his neck later on I won't have to go that high I'll simply move my hand like that and he's going to st stick it in the dirt so that's the next step folks I'm making the horse round on his own accord with intent so the next thing he'll do is a straight line then a turn straight line turn that's called a D but anyway, I've won the world today so I can take the rest of the day off. 
Thank you, guys.